Hello again, food safety friends. Uh, my name is Simon Timpley from the International Food Safety and Quality Network, and this is edition 27 of the Food Safety Fridays webinar program. Uh, it's great to have you along with us today, uh, watching live. Today's speaker is all the way from sunny Zimbabwe. Uh, we've, we're delighted to have Elizabeth Stridham uh, back. Uh, Elizabeth is a management consultant at Snap Tactics Consulting. And Elizabeth's uh, presentation today is going to be focused on purchasing uh, as being an integral part of an organization's processes and obviously fundamental to food safety. And uh, particularly, she's going to be talking about mutually beneficial supplier relationships, win-win. When something's win-win, it's, it's always more effective. So um, Elizabeth's going to be giving us a few pointers about that. Um, just like to say thanks to the sponsors uh, that you can see uh, to the uh, left of me. Is it the left or the right? I can't uh, imagine. Um, Trace Analytics, IFS, FSSC, and Safe Food 360. They sponsor this and help to bring it uh, free to you every week. Obviously, uh, we're very grateful to the presenters as well. So, Elizabeth, we're very uh, pleased to have her with us today. Um, I'll just head over to Elizabeth. Are you, are you there, Elizabeth? Yes, I am, Simon. Yeah, Hi. Hi, everyone. I, I can hear you, Elizabeth, but I can't see you. Um, oh. It's not, not to worry, um, because, ladies and gents, we have been having a few little issues with Elizabeth's uh, connection, so I will be sharing the slides today. Um, uh, so we'll see, that should work, but we'll see how it goes. Um, next week, I'll, in the sidebar, you should you should be able to register for next week's webinar. It's called Safe Food versus Healthy Food, and that's with Vladimir Sertinsky, who's the project manager at Quality Austria Center. And uh, the thrust of that uh, webinar will be to talk about historically, it's all been about food safety, but the, obviously, food safety stops people from getting injured or harmed now. But healthy food is vitally important to stop people getting injured or harmed in the over the long term. So the in the future, businesses will be uh, there's a drive towards healthy food as well as safe food, and business in the future will be expected to deliver both hand in hand safe food and healthy food. So Vladimir is going to be talking about that next week. Um, just to say, it is being recorded today. Um, I, we always send an email out after the webinar, a couple of days after, with the webinar video and the slides, and they'll be delivered to all people that have registered with their email. So don't worry, if you miss a bit today, if you have to nip away or you, you lose a bit due to bad connection, don't worry because it is recorded and we will send you the video recording and slides. Uh, we hope you'll participate with this today, uh, as you usually do, with questions and comments. And uh, we've got a poll later as well, so hopefully you'll interact with that. Okay, I don't think there's anything else. So I shall um, endeavor to get the slides up and then we'll start with the uh, presentation. Let me see. Can we see that? Can you see that, Elizabeth? Yes, yes, I can see it, Simon. Okay, well, you're, you're free to uh, go and just uh, poke me when you want me to transition the slide. Okay. Okay, I'll <laughs> see what to do, Simon. Uh, the aim of the presentation uh, basically is to highlight the criteria that we can use to select our suppliers and to monitor their performance. And also, I'll be outlining to you how to determine which suppliers to evaluate. And we'll also be discussing some purchasing mishaps that can be encountered uh, maybe during the purchasing process. And also I'll outline some strategies and best practices that can be utilized when purchasing. Uh, next slide, please. Oh, Simon, okay. I thought you'd fallen asleep, Simon. No, no, I think there's just a little bit of delay. Uh, that's all. So I, 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 okay. am, I am doing it, but just there may, there may be a couple of seconds delay, that's all. All right. Oh. Okay. It can be referred to, and some of these terms include procurement, 
sourcing, supply management, external resources, as well as supply chain management. You find uh, manager talking about the purchasing function. So purchasing uh, is just an act of buying goods and services that a company needs to operate or to produce the, pro the products that it's there to produce. So it's just a process of uh, buying and um, uh, buying goods and services. Okay. Uh, next slide, please. So to purchase effectively. Uh, you need to get everybody in the organization involved. So uh, purchasing is not like a one-man department, so to speak. It's not like you make a requisition and uh, you leave it there. The various departments, everybody has got a role to play, whether they are in finance, whether they are in stores, whether they are in quality control. Um, yeah, basically, especially those departments that are involved with the manufacturing um, uh, uh, process the ones that normally come in during manufacturing so you need to get them involved with regards to purchasing so everybody has got an input it's not it's not that purchasing has to do it on, on its own because they need input as well from the various um, uh, de departments so purchasing responsibilities can extend beyond placing a purchase order with the supplier and it requires significant knowledge and expertise like i've said like maybe from the people in finance because they they need to give you input input in whether they have the money to 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 purchase uh, maybe a piece of equipment that you require and engineering also to to give you their expertise from the engineering point of view and the manufacturing guys to give you their point of view from the manufacturing side because sometimes you know there's sort there are a, a number of maybe similar um equipment that are available on the market so they need to to the engineering guys the manufacturing guys need to give you input as to what exactly, because then the differences might be slight, but they can have a significant impact on your processes. And quality normally comes in maybe when they're giving you advice on whether this should be food grade or, or whether uh, it can affect food safety at the end of the day. So that's why you need everybody else to, to come in during the purchasing um, process. Next slide, please. Okay, so we'll just take a brief look at uh, the roles, the roles that purchasing has got to play in an organization. So their first role is to manage the suppliers in improving the Also, their main purpose, maybe uh, the reason why they exist is to select the lowest total cost supplier and ensure that the purchasing costs are, re are reduced. So normally their main aim is to see that the purchasing costs are as low as possible but then this also tends to to affect probably the quality of um, whatever raw materials or equipment that you want to purchase so that's why the other guys have to come in now because if you leave purchasing on their own item that is not what is there also to make sure that um, whatever it is that you are you, they are procuring is uh, for the benefit of the organization cost wise and also they are there to leverage the purchases by reducing suppliers and increasing uh, volumes you find that if you leave the purchasing process to everybody in the organization there will be so many suppliers that people can engage because each person knows probably um, different suppliers for different things or different suppliers for the same thing. So you find that if you just leave the purchasing process to anyone in the organization, you will have so many suppliers supplying you. And also the volumes now, everyone is purchasing small, small bits and pieces here and there such that you cannot maximize on the volumes in the sense that if you consolidate all your purchases into one, you can maybe have an advantage in terms of getting discounts from your suppliers. So that's why the purchasing function is there and also uh, they, they are also there to manage the supplier relationships. So the purchasing process or the purchasing guys, they are supposed to come in to, to ensure that the relationship with the supplier and the organization are as beneficial as, as possible. We'll look a bit, a bit later on the mutually beneficial um, supplier relationships and how they can, they can, how can they, how they can
in the agenda. Hello, Simon. Okay. Um, the basic, uh, we'll just look maybe just a, a, a brief outline of what a purchasing process is like in a typical organization. So you find that most companies, this is how their purchasing process is. If there's anyone out there who probably works in an organization that has a different purchasing process, probably they would just like to highlight how how or what, what happens uh, with regards to purchasing in their organization. But in a typical organization, you generally have a requisition being generated by the user department after they've probably identified a need for either a raw material or a piece of equipment. to see whether you've described what you require adequately and then uh, they then generate a purchase order. Normally the, the purchase order is generated after they've um, identified a piece of item that you require. So after generating the purchase order, the purchase order gets sent to the supplier and the supplier then um, uh, delivers or Usually the user department or the people from the user department get asked to come and check the goods. And usually the quality department, depending on what type of material it is, normally come in to, to check as well. Because like maybe for raw materials, you, they may need to do certain tests, maybe micro, microbiological tests to make sure that um, maybe the raw material that they're getting is up to standard with regards to micro. And that's exactly so. Usually, it's the user department. If if the user department is not the quality control department, and as well as maybe representatives from the quality control department coming in to check on the goods to make sure that um, they 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 are not a risk uh, possibly to food safety. And then, um, if they are happy with that, the goods get accepted uh, possibly into stores. And then, if they are not happy with the goods, then the purchasing department. is enough to uh, um, either replace the goods or to take back the organization please do tell us how um, I think probably for a, uh, a sole trader prob probably that probably doesn't exist but in a typical organization that's the purchasing process next slide please Simon so basically that That's like, um, um, the purchasing department also estimates how often and how much to order. So based maybe on what they, they, the information that they get from the finance department, whether the funds are available to pay for the goods, they normally uh, decide how much of the raw material they're going to purchase and possibly how often they're going to purchase as well, depending on the needs that you have specified as well. Okay, um, next slide, please, Simon. So we are just going to take a look at some of the guidelines that you can consider during the supplier selection process. You remember I said that the purchase order uh, gets generated after the suitable supplier has been selected. So I'm just going to highlight to you some of the criteria that you can use for your supplier selection process. So um, maybe just to take note that you need to have some proactive steps to verify your supplier's qualifications prior to giving them an order or a contract. And, and you are doing this to mitigate the risks which are usually associated with suppliers, especially for food safety. If what of giving you the proper raw materials or the proper equipment that won't affect um, the quality of your, of your food product that you're going to produce at the end of the day. So the main goals of supplier cleaning, uh, screening are to reduce the likelihood of supplier non-performance, such as late deliveries, no delivery at all, or the delivery of non-conforming goods, or unsafe um, uh, raw materials, or unsafe uh, goods. And also to ensure that the supplier will be a responsible and responsive partner in the day-to-day -day relationship of, um, 
uh, between the two of you. So uh, you need to have a supplier who, who is willing to listen to your concerns and also to be responsive to whatever concerns that you highlight. You need to have somebody that you can work with. Okay, next slide, please. So it's important uh, to have effective processes for selecting your suppliers. And typically the selection process normally starts with the development of a complete specification, either with regards to the specification of the, of the product that you require from the supplier, um, and also a specification probably on certain criteria that the supplier has to meet. And it ends with the best suppliers being selected and uh, providing you with the necessary requirements that you, uh, you are paying for. So as an organization, if you do not demand the best from your suppliers, you're probably going to get mediocre or slightly above average uh, performance from your suppliers. And the supplier base will not be challenged to improve, um, to improve and thus it will reduce their overall competi competitiveness. So you need to be demanding the best from your suppliers and you have to have proper criteria um, to ensure that you get the best. Okay, please, uh, next slide, please. So your selection process can involve uh, probably doing reference checks and these reference checks are probably has had maybe in the past where they have supplied this uh, a similar product and you are checking to see whether that customer was, was happy in terms of the performance of the supplier. So normally you find that uh, if they are not happy, they will tell you that, no, we're not happy probably with the quality of the goods or the service that we got from the supplier. So the reference checks is just one way of ascertaining whether your, the supplier that you're considering is somebody that you'll be able to work with and is somebody that is capable of giving what you want. So you can also consider their financial status and you can do this by checking. financial bankruptcy so if you give them an order and then at the end of the day you're expecting your goods but then they will tell you that uh, no sorry we've, we've closed the company because we ran out of funds so you would have wasted time um uh, you know that could probably affect your your own process as well because you don't have either probably an equipment or a piece of raw material that you require because uh, the supplier is now bankrupt and they can't supply you and another point to consider as well is their surge capacity availability. If you suddenly increase uh, your demands on the supplier, will they be able to, uh, to supply you in time with the resources that they currently have? So you need to ascertain um, whether they'll be able to meet any unforeseen uh, demands um, on your side. And also you need to check uh, for indications of supplier quality uh, and food safety as well as other certifications. So uh, depending on, on what type of material you have, you can either set um, a requirement that they have to have some kind of either food safety certification on maybe uh, your brand as well, because some brands, they, they, they focus on environment as well. So you, you want to deal with the suppliers that are more in line with your own policies as well. So, so that supplier has. And also you need to gauge uh, whether they are able to, they, they have the capacity to meet your specifications in terms of probably the specifications of the raw material or the specifications of the equipment that you want to buy. So you just need to, to assess that. So basically that, that's some of, the, some of the things that you can check or that you can use Hello, Simon. Are you still awake? I am. Yeah, but you, your audio keeps dropping in and out. Um, oh. Uh, so I didn't get anything, but. Well, perfect. Just to say to the uh, audience, um, uh -huh. yeah, unfor unfortunately, it is dropping in and out the the audio. Uh, there's nothing we okay. can do. There's nothing we can do about it. But what you can do is 
like I'm doing. I'm listening to Elizabeth talk, I'm reading these slides and I'm filling in the blanks. And uh, that's the best we can hope for today. So we'll just proceed like that. So are you ready for the next slide, Elizabeth? Yes, yes. I've actually said next slide, Simon. I think probably it was at the time when I dropped out or something. Okay. Yeah. There you go. Okay, thank you. Um, so in addition to the criteria that I gave you, so you can also consider the following. Uh, the price, um, the, their delivery capability, do they have trucks to deliver uh, the goods that you have ordered or do you need to go to the supplier premises yourself and get the goods yourself? You also need to consider their technical capability and usually, yeah, uh, this is uh, technical capability can be either raw material usage or the uh, pieces of equipment that you are purchasing. So you need to have support in, in certain instances. So you need to assess whether they'll be able to give you the technical support should you need it. And also you need the market or they've got a bad reputation. So if they have a bad reputation, you are most likely not going to want to, to deal with them because um, it raises uh, your risk um, in terms of, of dealing with that supplier. You also want to assess whether uh, they are maintain maintainability in the sense that um, are they an organization service should you require one uh, their location are they situated in a, in a place that's uh, good for you or are they in another country and if they're in another country and they're far away from you how is that going to affect you uh, in terms of maybe should you need um, support or or um, goods to be supplied within a short um, period of time, time that they've been uh, in operation? Are they an organization that has been operating for a long time or for a short time? Normally, it's riskier to deal with the organizations that have been around for only a short period of time because um, you don't know in terms of... Um, their capabilities but um, a, a supplier that's been operating for a long time the, the chances that uh, they'll disappoint you are quite slim so at the end of the day purchasing is all about managing the risk so you need to assess also the the, the leadership um, is their management uh, consisting of people probably with the dubious one known for dubious um, um, what can I say dubious uh, policies or who are not who are not viewed upon who don't have that much respect probably in the industry so you want to deal with people who have management uh, personnel who are, are well recognized in the industry and also quality control methods and practices do they have a quality control department are their methods suitable for, to ensure that if it's a raw material the raw material is safe um, uh, safe enough uh, to to not affect your own food safety um, um, practices in your own organization and also you need to assess whether the, the products that they are giving you are compatible probably with the, your operations or compatible with the other products that you are you are handling um, because you don't want to have a, a product that's that you're getting from your from your supplier that's going to affect next slide please simon So those were the points that you can consider So normally uh, upon receiving you need to you need to check uh, whether the, the goods that are being delivered conform to the purchase order requirements that were specified when you gave your supplier the, the purchase order. You also need to check um, uh, whether what they've supplied uh, meets probably the description of the goods, the size that you specified, the color of the product, and also normally for certain things, uh, you, you may need food grade items. So you need to check whether what they've supplied you is a food grade item. Uh, like maybe for example, uh, tubing, um, yeah, like maybe some pipes may need them to be food grade type. So you need to check whether what is being supplied meets your specifications. You also need to check that the quantity uh, ordered is is um, complying with the quantity that is delivered. 
we need to check whether there are any breakages in terms of um, the goods, basically the suitability of the goods. Next slide, please, Simon. Okay, um, you need to check if there are any units of measurements that you have used. Like, for example, sometimes you may say you, know, you need five dozens uh, of a certain um, item. So you need to check that in, in, in each package, there are actually 12 in that package to, to meet the unit of measurement that is specified. You also need to check on the documentation that accompanies uh, the goods. Sometimes you may specify that um, your raw material should be accompanied with a certificate of analysis to show that probably the chemical content is um, meeting the specifications that you require, uh, or maybe the microbiological content is meeting um, the specifications that you've highlighted. So you need the certificate of analysis to be coming in with the goods so that you can verify those aspects. And also you need to check uh, the expiry dates on the goods to make sure that the, the dates have not been exceeded. So um, all this is in um, to maintain your food safety or to increase the chances that your, your, your food safety um, uh, standards are maintained. And you need to check that your products are operational and that they are functional. So normally the quality control department comes in here as well as the user department to see that the, the products are operational. Yeah, but basically those are some of the things that you can check uh, after you receive a delivery. Next slide, please, Simon. Okay, we'll now move on to uh, performance-based um, supplier evaluation. So you, you have engaged your, your supplier uh, they've uh, supplied you with goods either once or a number of times. So you need to check now whether their performance meets your expectations. So not only should you uh, evaluate them during the selection process, but you need to evaluate them as well after they have supplied you with the goods. And you need to do this uh, regularly. So you'll find that some of the points that you um, probably you would have used during um, the selection process will also come in. Uh, when you're now uh, evaluating the supplier for performance. So some of those aspects that you can consider is the timeliness of the delivery, the completeness of the orders that were delivered, the quality of the items delivered, where your food safety standards met, um, the quality of the supplier, they consider it to your needs, did they care? that they were providing you with the appropriate goods. When you stated that you wanted food grade, did they actually strive to make sure that they were actually giving you a food grade um, a piece of item? Uh, you also need to evaluate them in terms of price, uh, their performance with the previous orders. Uh, you also need to consider whether their financial condition is still stable for you to continue using them uh, in future, and also assess them on whether they were able to meet your specifications. Next slide, please, Simon. You can also consider the expertise of their sales uh, staff and their technical staff as well when you had a problem. Uh, how knowledgeable with this technical staff in terms of probably the, the performance of their product. Um, the flexibility and readiness for change. When you're making changes, maybe either to the order, were they ready to, to accept your changes or were they reluctant to, to be flexible to your needs? Their production capacity, do they have a production capacity that's suitable for your needs? their geological location, the information and communication systems that uh, they have, are they still primitive in the sense that probably they don't have telephones, they don't have emails, and probably that's how you, you communicate and you prefer them to have that. So you need to assess them on whether their, their uh, communication systems are suitable for you. Um, as well as their leadership, are they still having their top management um, being a principal people or are they still dubious people uh, among them, the management? Um, any additional service that they were willing to give you, their cooperation and their attitude, the um, innovation and research and development um, practices within their organization, if, he, if of course that does affect um, your needs. So, because some, some, some suppliers probably, they don't, they don't even need a research and development um, department. So you just need to, to just pick some of these items that I have listed here that you think would be suitable as part of um, assessing uh, your suppliers. And also you could consider whether they are meeting any legal requirements. 
So there may be some obligatory food safety assurance systems that they're supposed to meet. So you need to assess whether they are actually meeting those legal um, requirements and any other certifications that are required. Next slide, please, Simon. Okay. Um, okay. Um, you need to check as well. You may need to check uh, whether they've got any policies in terms of training and development. Do they um, look favorably upon training their staff, uh, their reputation? Do they still have a good reputation on the market? Uh, their packaging and handling ability, the, the, the packaging probably that they're giving you the goods in. Is it a package that you can, you can, you are able to handle um, um, in your own organization? Because sometimes there may be packaging in large quantities that probably need a forklift and you would prefer to have small packages. So you need to assess whether they are meeting your requirements in terms of their packaging and handling. Um, also, sometimes the labor relations record, environmental and social responsibility. So normally, these three the labor, the environment, and the um, safety awareness normally comes in if probably you have policies on those yourself. So, you, you would want them to have uh, policies on those as well so that. Um, environmental policies that could affect uh, your own uh, image when your customers get to know that you have suppliers that probably don't consider the environment and yet they expect you and your suppliers to um, to 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 comply probably in terms of uh, maintaining the environment and also you could assess whether the cultural con congruence um, is in line with the, your line of business. Um, the only thing that can come to mind, maybe a problem when I'm talking about culture, is probably like um, um, maybe they, do, they, 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 they don't prefer to deal with the, or to interact with women in business. So your purchasing staff is uh, mainly female. So it's just an example that I'm giving. So probably you may have some, some friction because of the fact that your Purchasing and staff is mainly women and they probably don't want to deal with women. So you may want to check that the culture is in congruence with your own culture as well. And also you can consider the terrorism risk because food sometimes um, can be used for terrorist uh, um, uh, terrorism activities. So you want to check whether what you're getting from your supplier, uh, there's minimal risk in terms of uh, terrorism being used uh, 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 as probably a tool for terrorism. So those are some of the uh, aspects that you can consider when you are evaluating the performance of your supplier. Next slide, please, Simon. So after you have determined your evaluation criteria, you need to I you need to determine how uh, what it is that you term uh, acceptable performance. So normally, um, in terms of um, the supply evaluation, some people probably use a checklist of some sort whereby they are. They are giving uh, suppliers uh, certain scores based on, 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 on how they feel the supplier performed on a particular aspect. So at the end of the day, you can have a total score or a minimum total score that you want your supplier to achieve for you to continue uh, dealing with them in future. So if they don't meet that particular score, then you can just drop them off and find somebody else who is able to meet the criteria that you've set. So you collect the data and you analyze um, to see whether their performance is acceptable. That is whether they've met your minimum uh, requirements. And then you decide on what to do with the supplier. Are you going to maintain them as your supplier or are you going to drop them off? Or are you going to probably point out action points that they need to improve on? Um, and then probably you, you, you want to also assess whether uh, the criteria that you have is actually suitable or you need to reset probably your, your goals in terms of maybe having other criteria, additional criteria, or maybe relooking at the criteria that you're actually using for that particular supplier. Okay, uh, next slide, please, Simon. All right, so normally when I go to some organizations, I find that 
there are some organizations that find performance evaluations for suppliers a bit challenging. So um, I'm interested to know whether, you know, like probably from uh, the people that are attending the webinar today, uh, how many of them actually, or how many organizations out there uh, actually carry out these pe uh, performance evaluations uh, for their suppliers. So the poll question for today, does your organization carry out any formal performance-based evaluations on these suppliers? So please, please do vote on that and uh, we'll okay. see whether, yeah. Yeah, I've loaded that uh, poll in the sidebar and uh, uh, attendees are voting. Um, at the moment it's 60, 40 roughly, 60 yes, uh, 40 no, which is changing a little bit. Okay. Um, I mean, right. what, a lot of companies, a lot of attendees here will be working towards some sort of food safety certification standards, uh -huh. GFSI standards, such as, you know, BRC, SQF, FSSC, uh -huh. IFS. Within those standards, yeah. it's, it's mandatory to um, perf measure the performance of suppliers and have control. So. Uh, actually, I'm, I'm quite surprised that it's coming out at 58% yes, 42% no. Uh -huh. That's quite high, would you okay. think? Yeah? yeah, yeah, it's actually quite high. But probably, like you say, uh, because of the standards that they probably have in their organization, so they are forced uh, to do these uh, performance-based evaluations. But I wonder if the standards went there, would anyone be bothered to, to do, you know, performance evaluations on their suppliers? Mm, just uh, yeah just off their own yeah. Uh, back yeah that's a good point okay so that that's the result of the poll 61 percent, 63 percent yes 38 percent no uh, okay so yeah so it's it's hovering around 60 percent hey yeah okay so okay. We'll, we'll move on right. okay move on. yeah next slide please okay all right, so normally also um, there's usually confusion as to who to evaluate because uh, some organizations are quite big and they've got so many suppliers. So the question that normally comes up is how do I determine who to evaluate? Do I evaluate all my suppliers or uh, do I have to select a certain few? And when I'm selecting those, how do I go about selecting? So um, in inventory management, there's... Um, an analysis tool that they term ABC analysis, which is basically a process of uh, grouping uh, probably stock or items. So you are, you are putting your high value items as your A group and then your medium value items uh, in your B group and the C group uh, generally consists of your low value items. So an analysis of the annual consumption of the materials in an organization can generally indicate which ones uh, can fall into the A group. And normally that's about 10% of the items um, in, in, in terms of value. So 10% um, of the items will account for approximately 70% of total consumption value of the items. Items can be termed uh, or can fall under A group items. And then you have 70% uh, of the total number of items accounting for only 10% of consumption value. So you have more of the low value items falling into the C group. So that's about 70% of the items that you have in your organization can fall under the C group. And then all the, um, the, um, the, the other items that don't fall into either A or C can then be termed your B uh, group items. And that's usually about 20% of the total items uh, accounting for about 20% of the consumption, the annual consumption value um, of the goods. Just, Next slide please, Simon. Just on that one, Elizabeth, um, uh -huh. your slide looks at it from a cost point of view, but equally could you uh, rank them A, B, C based on high, medium and low risk in terms of how are the food safety and quality that could affect your own products? Yes, yes. So, so one way of doing it, you can look at the value and then the other way of doing it is to look at the risk. So you can use a combination of these methods to come up with which uh, goods or which suppliers of the goods to, to evaluate. Okay. Okay. I don't know whether we are talking the same thing, Simon. We are, yeah. So this is just, 
it's just a tool to assist you. The ABC analysis is just a tool to assist you in probably gauging which items or which suppliers, supply of items to evaluate. So in addition to the ABC, you can also look at the, the, the risk in terms of food safety of, that, of a particular product. So if the risk is high, you probably want to assess uh, that supplier to include that supplier um, in your, in your performance-based evaluations. Okay, next slide. Okay, I don't know if I've answered your question. You did, you did, yeah. Okay, all right. All right, so um, management has the role of studying each uh, item of stock, uh, the usage, the lead time, technical other problems, and the relative money value um, in the total investment of, of, in, of inventories. So then you can have your critical items, those are your high value items, which deserve very close attention in the low value items. Item. Okay, so um, equal attention to A, B, C items will not be worthwhile and it will be very expensive. So it's best probably to focus on the high value items that fall uh, probably in the A and the B value um, um, uh, sections or groups. So you, I would suggest that you focus on evaluating the suppliers that are supplying you with goods that fall either in the A group or the B group. And then also you can consider, in addition to the APC, the, the risk that is associated with the particular items in terms of food safety or, or any other risk to, to include them in the, in the performance-based evaluations. All right, uh, next slide, please, Simon. Just, just, uh, just to put in again, uh, one of the attendees, Bria, uh -huh. Bria, has said, my organization doesn't have a standard, we do not have a supplier evaluation process at our facility. but Sometimes, um, if you think, well, oh, we've got 100 suppliers, uh, how are we going to do this? It becomes too big a project that you don't do, yeah. anyth don't do anything, and you'd be far, yeah. be far better um, concentrating, like you say, based on risk, based on cost, based on risk to the product. Maybe a, yeah. a, a, there might be a handful of suppliers where it's critical, and surely yeah. you can do at least some um, supplier uh, evaluation with those, Evaluations. With yeah. those suppliers. Yeah. So start, yeah. start uh, look at your whole supply base and, and start with the ones that are high risk, high cost. Yes, to your business. yes. And, and if you yeah. can do them, at least you're doing something. Okay, I'll move on. Yeah. Okay, okay. All right, um, so, um, okay, maybe from your ABC analysis or in terms of risk as well, like Simon has said, you can group your suppliers into strategic, preferred, or transactional suppliers. So normally the suppliers that fall under transactional, trans, uh, sorry, strategic suppliers are those that are your most important um, suppliers. So they're supplying you with the essential materials and capabilities that are not easily replaced. So normally also your sole suppliers normally fall in under your strategic suppliers because you can't do without them. And they're the only people with the, probably the goods that you require. So those, those critical suppliers could be your strategic suppliers as well. And then you have the important but you 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 have alternative suppliers that can supply you with the same type of, of product so for example you can have a product and you have two or three suppliers so you can use either of those normally uh, cost then comes in now when it's time to buy that particular item so you've got a number of people that can supply you with that and then and they're all capable so then you can just choose one from your preferred suppliers and you normally cost then becomes a factor and then you've got your transactional suppliers and these are the suppliers that are basically supplying you with standard products that can be easily replaced in a short uh, space of time. Okay, uh, next slide please, Simon. Right, so now we'll just look at how to maintain mutually beneficial supplier relationships. So first of all, the buyers and the suppliers need to understand that they need each other for, for them to survive. So they need to take um, each other's considerations, um, uh, you know, to, to, to make sure that everybody's happy because you need the buyer 
uh, uh, you need the supplier and they also need you to buy their products. So you need to have empathy for one another to ensure that um, you both survive. And then the suppliers should desist from changing uh, prices frequently or from changing probably uh, contract agreements that you have agreed on. Um, they should um, make sure that they're supplying you with adequate quantities and also that the quality is the quality that you require in terms of food safety. They should make sure that they're meeting uh, your food safety or deliveries at uh, times that are inappropriate to you. And also you on the other turn, you should uh, make sure that you are not treating your, um, your suppliers in a poorly manner by probably ignoring their invoice terms and delaying their payments because they need the money for them to, to survive as well as a business. And also to probably treat the, the suppliers' employees well by not being rude to them and um, also not making uh, last minute high priority demands. So you, you should also take into consideration that some of the demands that you're making uh, on your suppliers may not be reasonable. So just to try and maintain the relationship um, between you and the supplier, you just need to take some of these things into consideration. Next slide, please, Simon. Okay, so there should be two-way communication. To enhance an area, you should be able to highlight to be willing to accept uh, probably the issues that you have raised and make commitments to sort them out. And then um, uh, you should also uh, follow up on, on them to make sure that they, they are taking action uh, in terms of sorting out the, the, the problem that um, you probably highlighted to them. Next slide, please, Simon. So uh, also as the buyer organization, you should be open to uh, receiving input from the supplier. Because and probably the, the, the way you're using their product, uh, the supplier, and um, to our ideas. So all in the efforts of maintaining a beneficial, a mutually beneficial relationship, be open to the input that you're getting from your suppliers. And also when you negotiate, you should keep in mind that everybody should be winning at the end of the day. So it's critical um, for both parties, uh, for the relationship to, to drive. So negotiate, but negotiate also uh, keeping in mind that um, the, the, the suppliers also have their own objectives that they have to meet as well. So trust is essential to generating a continuous stream of value-added activities from your suppliers. Next slide, please, Simon. So uh, we are going to look at some of the purchasing missteps uh, that normally, that usually occur. So the first one is misunderstandings, and these normally occur frequently, and it's normally probably how you document your, your, your orders or yeah, your orders to your, to your suppliers. For example, you can state that you want 50 items of a certain product, but then you haven't specified whether you want bottles or you want cases. So then you can have misunderstandings coming in because you would have ordered 50 cases. In your mind, you would have wanted 50 cases, but then the supplier gives you 50 bottles and then a misunderstanding arises. Or maybe uh, you state that you want a food grade item and then you haven't specified that in your order. You've just stated that you want uh, tubing. Or to you haven't specified that you want food grade tubing. So you have to ensure that your orders are in writing and that they're specific as, as much as possible. And if you sense that probably the supplier hasn't uh, understood what it is that you, um, you want, you need to make sure that you clarify uh, or you have clarifications pointed out immediately. Next slide, please. Another mishap that you can have are the disputes arising. Probably you have an agreement with your supplier and you uh, have on the prices uh, or they've um, not met their delivery times that they would have promised you. So uh, to protect yourself uh, against such disputes, you could make use of the orders as well to keep track of what was ordered 
when it was due and what the price was. So documentation is key at the end of the day. Next slide, please. And then also duplication of procurement efforts. Like I said earlier, um, if you have the departments, the various departments in your organization all involved in making their own um, purchasing orders, you can have duplication of, of those efforts uh, taking place within the organization. And this can cost uh, time and money. Uh, so it's best to centralize your purchasing function to avoid uh, duplication. And also, like I mentioned, that um, if you centralize the purchasing function, you can then have volumes uh, increasing and then you can utilize that for discounts uh, from your suppliers. Next slide, please. And then also sometimes you can have a breach of brand uh, coming up. If you, are a, if you are a company with a strong corporate identity, you, the, you run the risk of doing business with a supplier that violates um, that identity. For example, if you are known for your food safety, your strong food safety policies, and then you deal with a company that's probably known for poor, with poor food safety uh, values, then you can have your, your brand being affected uh, because of that. So if the brand is used as a marketing strategy, you need to take care uh, to ensure that your procurement is, for, is from companies that complement uh, your brand image. Next slide, please. And then also you run the risk of uh, procuring uh, unusable items. So that's why you need to have the various uh, departments getting involved in procurement. Because uh, sometimes um, you, uh, if they don't, Just because the purchasing can go and buy something that probably will not work in the organization. So when procuring an item, the, the users of that item need to get involved uh, to guide probably in what it is exactly that you have to purchase. The nitty gritties, the minor specifications need to be highlighted. Next slide, please. Right, we'll now just take a brief look at uh, some, some purchasing strategies that you can utilize. Uh, some of them I've already mentioned, like for example, you need to have a good spread of suppliers who can provide you with a reliable supply of goods uh, with good terms. And you need to compare your suppliers in terms of prices as well as probably uh, food safety of the contracts by having agreements with all your major suppliers. Um, you need to ensure good uh, supplier relationships um, so, so as to avoid problems. And this is one of the key purchasing best pra practices, um, which will ensure that you have a purchasing, um, your, purchasing your purchasing process is stress-free. Next slide, please. Um, like I said, you need to have your preferred suppliers list, which you're updating regularly, and your performance assessments can assist you in updating your preferred suppliers list. And for your stocks, you need to have reorder levels um, determined to, so as to guide you when to replenish. Uh, the purchasing process uh, well before you run out. And um, cost reduction, you remember we said that's the key, uh, one of the key um, roles of the purchasing department is to make sure that uh, the costs are not um, substantially high. And deliveries need to be checked and the goods inspected when they arrive to make sure that they are meeting the specifications, either in terms of food safety and um, other criteria. And when you negotiate, negotiate hard but fairly so that your suppliers understand that um, you need keen prices uh, and good terms, but they can still uh, wish to remain in business with you. So like we said, it should be a win-win situation for both parties. And your product information should be up to date and the price is current. Next slide, please. And your staff should be fully trained and motivated to understand the business goals. You need to communicate your purchasing policies to all relevant staff. Um, and it's good to have purchasing policies within your, your organization and practice team-based procurement. Like I said, everybody needs to get involved in the buying process so that you can gain valuable insights that you probably wouldn't have if you were working on your own in the purchasing department. 
Next slide, please. In management, um, sorry, one, Simon, one slide far. back. Sorry. Yes. Okay, uh, management needs to understand um, the need to maintain best practices and they should be assessing the purchasing role in terms of uh, enhancing the organizational bottom line. And like we said, you, it's, 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 it's good practice to have your purchasing activities centralized as much as possible. And also the technology that the purchasing department uh, is using should be the best technology that is probably the best technology on the market so that they can perform their duties um, well. And you, you can also consider having incentives for your staff when either they make uh, savings on purchasing or maybe you can also throw in the food safety factor if they are continuously buying um, uh, goods uh, with food safety in mind. You can also consider having some incentives for them as well. Next slide, Simon. So just to wrap up, uh, maybe to some points to take home from the presentation today. The purchasing process requires uh, input from uh, a number of departments within the organization. It's not it's not just the purchasing department that needs to 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 have and the task of managing suppliers is much easier if care is taken right from the the start uh, the selection process so that you minimize on uh, subsequent problems from your suppliers and supplier evaluations can be time consuming and costly so uh, you need to be selective in terms of who you are evaluating and the apc analysis is just one of the tools that can assist you in determining um, who to evaluate but you can also look at uh, the risk to food safety as well and the periodic uh, performance evaluations are required to monitor the improvements um, and ensure that uh, your organization is obtaining value okay so basically that's my presentation for today I hope it was uh, helpful to some people out there. So thank you very much for your time. Okay. Thanks very much, uh, Elizabeth. Uh, we did. We did. Um, you, from your side, you probably didn't notice, uh, but there was okay. uh, audio, like a lag breaking up uh, throughout. <clears throat> okay. But rather than keep stopping and starting, it did actually. Um, <clears throat> I don't think we actually missed anything. It just carried on from where you were speaking. So, uh, but oh, okay. The, the overall um, theme of the presentation uh, it was clear. Um, uh huh. So, well, I, I think I've. Tell me if I've. Let's have a little exam now and let's see if I pass. So we should <laughs> set, we should centralize purchasing to stop lots of people having lots of little suppliers and. So we can have cost benefits of centralizing purchasing. Uh, yeah. Use a team approach uh, so that everybody, especially if you're buying something critical, that uh, uh, you're buying something that's fit for purpose, that satisfies all criteria for engineering, technical quality, food safety, cost. Um, you select suppliers based on uh, risk assessment, ABC, costing, and food. can they deliver can they meet you the policies of your organization, etc.? Uh, then yeah. you then you look at your supply base and based on ABC, you yeah. decide who you're going to measure, uh, how how you're yeah. going to measure them, how frequently. Then you work yeah. with those suppliers to improve performance, and it's a win-win. Yeah, yeah. So, so hopefully you win-win also in food safety as well. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Right. Well, yeah. let, let's see if there's any uh, any questions that we can uh, pick up on. Um, I think I did see one or two. Oh, uh, well, actually, I, I do have one. You you do have a, a problem if you were if you were a small customer. So so I'm a small customer. Often in those cases, it's difficult to influence a supplier. You know, if I've got some particular parts of my specification, let's say I want a certificate of analysis with every delivery. Yeah. And they say, well, yeah. well, we don't do that, but they're a huge supplier and I'm a tiny customer, then I have no influence on, on them. So sometimes it can be difficult. Um, yeah, yeah. But I think uh, that's why probably you need to have a number of suppliers. You know, you, you, you need to try and find um, 
a number of people who can probably supply you so that if the other guy is not meeting your needs then you can try the other guy yeah that, yeah that's yeah. possible that's possible but if there are only somebody said you know when when do you if if a customer is supplying a raw material but the raw material supplier does not respond to the evaluation request um sometimes there might only be one one particular supplier you know um so it, it can be if you've got to try and get what you want from the supplier yeah. and, and if you can yeah. then then you look for a different supplier but if there's not another supplier um, then probably you just have to have a face-to-face -face meeting with them probably they don't understand why it is that you're being particular about a certain aspect so yeah. you might need to highlight it to them maybe you have a meeting with them where you're highlighting your concerns i don't know yeah. Yeah, it's <laughs> so it's just try as much as possible to engage them two-way communication yeah i agree with that yeah. it's, you can't just uh, throw your hands up and say we can't you've got to do what you can uh, within, can, the, yeah. within the supply base so you you try and get the yeah. best supplies you can who can deliver the spec and you try yeah. and get and you try and get um the if you need questionnaires filling in if you need certification if you if you need yeah. to evaluate them every year you you try yeah. to do that yeah. um yeah. any more questions uh yes you will get a copy of the presentation and, and the video um so don't worry about that S somebody said ali said would you suggest that managers in charge of food safety and quality uh, should vet and approve purchasing transactions before orders are raised um i think uh like i said uh everybody needs to get involved so they should have an input before the order is actually made as to whether they think that supplier yeah it's more rather than uh, at the I think you have certain criteria that sorry yeah i was gonna i was gonna say you broke up then i was gonna say rather than at the order stage it should be at the supplier selection selection stage, stage. yeah yeah so, so normally under selection uh under the supplier selection Most, they probably they've highlighted the criteria that the supplier should should meet. So normally now that that's where the food safety managers can can have input as to what yeah. uh, criteria the, the the supplier should meet. That's that's important work. The, you do all yeah. the ground you do all the crown groundwork and make sure the supplier can deliver everything you need, and then purchase yeah. them, purchase and then can on a transaction transaction basis all yeah. the things without needing the sign off of uh, food safety or yeah. quality manager yeah yeah so oh. at the end of the day if you really look at it it's all about managing risk yeah, yeah. okay on that note uh, elizabeth we'll um yeah. we'll leave it um okay thanks thanks very much on behalf of myself and the ifsqn and the attendees today um okay thank you as well we'll see you again in the near future have a nice Hopefully. weekend. Oh. Okay. Take care, Elizabeth. Um, All right, same goodbye. Okay, thanks, Elizabeth. Um, yeah, I've loaded the All certificate right. in this sidebar. Um, it should be next week's, uh, this week's certificate, not next week's. Um, hopefully you can download that. Let me see if I can. If you if it doesn't download, oh yeah, it's last week's certificate. It's all going wrong this week. <laughs> Listen, don't worry about it. I will send all of you an email uh, after this webinar, a day or so after this webinar, I'll send you all an email with a link to the certificate, uh, and the video and the slides. So don't worry about it. Okay, so that's it. Um, Thanks for attending today. Uh, thanks for bearing with us despite the problems. Um, hope to see you next week for Safe Food versus Healthy Food with Vladimir Sachinsky. Uh, I will be in touch by email. Register for that. Have a nice weekend and uh, I'll see you next week. Take care.